Let's go into our news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. They know mortgages. They've been knowing mortgages for over 30 years, and it is the second half of February now. And so if you are thinking about possibly buying a house, you want to be armed for the potential conflict that is the house buying rat race uh, with a pre-approval letter from Eagle Mortgage. So talk to them. Meet with one of their mortgage brokers. They'll help you figure out what uh, is right for you financially. They can talk about conventional, FHA, VA loans, what's ever appropriate. You can find them online at Eagle Mortgage Company. Com. All right, guys, let's get into the news of the week. Uh, the first story, a Metropolitan Area Planning Agency uh, re- released the results of a study. They were considering where along Interstate 80 would be the right spot for another Interstate 80 interchange in Sarpy County. We need another one. We probably... Frankly, you could probably make an argument we need two or three interchanges. This on. has been going on for at least 10 years. Uh, I mean, we are, we've been talking about this forever, but um, not a surprise. The planning study um, assessed that the uh, 192nd Street uh, crossing of Interstate 80 would be the most advantageous for an interchange. I, I think you could also look at um, uh, 204th. And I-80 might be a good one. That Now, that confuses some people because the Nebraska Highway 31 exit by Nebraska Crossing is actually 216th there. Yep. Uh, the highway jogs to the west through Gretna. Um, so some people you know, think 204th would be a good one. Some people think we should maybe have one at Flug Road uh, closer to the Platte River. But um, at any rate, guys, this uh, not a big surprise that they chose 192nd. But construction is probably nowhere near starting on this anytime soon. The study also indicated that we need improvements, maybe some capacity increases and traffic flow improvements for the existing interchanges at Highway 370. I can attest to that. That one's tough. And um, at Highway 31 needs some some improvements as well. But we'll see. I think uh, continued growth in western Sarpy County, which is going to happen really does require uh, the addition of some some interchanges there. We were talking about this earlier. I think, like you said, a lot of people assume this was where it was going to go because, you know, the way they've lined up 192nd in Giles and 180th in Giles. And then also, you know, there's a high V at 192nd that's nearly constructed and all that dirt moving on the west side of 192nd, 370. There's just a lot of activity already going on. And the sooner they get this in, will be it'll be better. Brad, what about the... the um the sewer infrastructure and the watershed, you know, there's a, the there's South a lot Sarpy. of, yeah, there's a, talk a little bit as an engineering firm, talk about how um, this road expansion will be needed as the, as the development's opening up. Even as far as the access or? Well, well, just, there's gonna be a lot more developable ground when, when it has oh, yeah. sewer. The, so the sewer's under construction now. If you drive along Platte View Road, you'll see pipes laying everywhere and going in the ground, huge pipes. Uh, and there's people waiting to jump on that ground soon as soon as there's sewer access. You can't build a neighborhood without sewer. And so as soon as that's in, the, I think the development in Sarpy County is going to take off even more than it already is. We're selling farms without sewer that people just anticipating sewer coming. They'll keep it as farms for maybe eight, nine years and then develop it. Retail follows rooftops, but none of it happens without a good sewer. We know that for sure. Next item on the news, the City of Omaha and Metropolitan Utilities District have reached an agreement resolving utility relocation costs associated with our future downtown to midtown streetcar. This was a sticking point for a while, fellas. Uh, MUD will reprioritize work within the streetcar project area and contribute $7.6 million toward utility replacement and reload costs, uh, which are currently estimated to be approximately $20 million. The city will fund the remaining costs. And uh, so this means that one of the last barriers uh, between where we are now and having a beautiful streetcar system in 2026 has been taken care of. Great sign. I say kudos to the leaders uh, in City Hall and at MUD for coming together and uh, and figuring out something that allows a very important project to move forward. Absolutely. And I, I think it, it's necessary. Omaha has always been about compromise. The stakeholders get together with Public Works. They get together with MUD, the utilities, and uh, it's, it's a great sign. And now we can start to anticipate maybe some 
big investments um, happening along the streetcar line. Shoot, they already have. I mean, a lot of the things that are underway in that corridor were done with the hope and assumption um, that we would have a streetcar line. But I think um, now you're going to see more and more mixed use and multifamily projects uh, be proposed and get started along that line. It'll be fun to watch it. Remember, Jen Otto talked about the 30, 30, 30, mm-hmm. 30,000 jobs. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, 30,000 residents. Yeah. 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 30,000 residents in, in, within 30 years. Mm-hmm. I, I'm particularly interested in what's going to happen at the former mutual site. I mean, I feel like that's the biggest, almost the biggest piece of land there that needs to be repurposed and it's right on the line. Uh, I think we're going to get probably some amazing announcements in the next two to three years, even just uh, for that site specifically. There's so much land there. And uh, like, like you say, right along the streetcar line, and it's halfway between downtown and the med center. So uh, it's, it's prime real estate. Speaking of that area, this is uh, some good news. Uh, the former Mutual of Omaha employee parking lot located at 36th and Farnham Street. So this is directly north of Crescent Moon Ale House, if you can picture that, is now open for public parking. It's about 300 stalls, five bucks a day. So that will provide some some parking relief for that area. Is surface parking back there? Yeah, surface parking up oh, there. Okay, is it that big? It's a big lot. It's a big lot. It stretches yeah. all the way from Dodge like, up to Crescent Moon, so it's okay. a pretty big lot. I think it's going to be great for the businesses there. I know that uh, as soon as we lost that surface lot uh, where that eight, nine-story project is going, I know a lot of those restaurants felt that uh, as soon as that started and closed. So that's this a, will be a big That's a relief. big crane over there, isn't it? That big blue. Amazing, yeah. <laughs> They're talking about a nine-story mixed-use building directly west of the Kempton Cottonwood Blackstone Hotel that would have a city-owned parking garage on the lower level, street-level retail, and a bunch of multifamily residential units. It's amazing what they're doing on just one city block with that building. And can you imagine if you applied that to the entire mutual campus? Well, yeah, and that's uh, that's supposedly Brad what the streetcar's going to do for us. When you when you when you have that, you can have that kind of density there, and, height. and it's extremely efficient. It's yeah, it's it's really a lesson in density, and 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 also new zoning ordinances that are allowing less setbacks and more more units and more density. I mean, you're going to start to see these buildings looking different than Omaha has ever been able to have them before because of the TOD, for example, the TOD zoning um, designation. Transit-oriented oriented oriented development. development. For example, that's something that is just a, it's a whole new set of rules that, you know, developers can use to, to drive density in the urban core, and I think it's working. Just wait till we start getting autonomous cars where the car just drops you off and parks three inches away from another car waiting to pick somebody else up. Yeah, that's right. Then we don't even need parking garages anymore, probably, I guess. Yeah, and then we'll turn all of our parking garages into like vertical agricultural places or something like that where we grow crops. Um, So we have all sorts of ideas around here. But speaking of tall buildings, 14th Street is going to close on Monday for about three years because it's needed, that space is needed for Mutual of Omaha skyscraper construction. And uh, so so this, the, the, the building itself will be on the block bounded by 14th, 15th, uh, Farnham, and Douglas, but the lot directly to the east is vacant, and that's going to be used as staging area. They'll close 14th Street so the heavy equipment can move back and forth, Brad, and that'll allow uh, crews to be more efficient building something tall in a tight space. Yeah, the, if you've been down there this week, a whole bunch of job site trailers started showing up, so that's a pretty good sign that work's about to begin. And you can be assured that Brad Williams Photography will cover it all. From the sky, from the yeah. ground, from every part. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been down there. I've, a lot of the renderings you see, not all of them, but most of the renderings you see, I took the pictures for those. So I've already been down there covering it. It's been been cool to get the before pictures. So I'll have a nice before and after when it's all done. So will they still stage on that lot to the east of where the building is supposed to go? Yes. Yeah. There will be a lot of equipment staged there. And then with 14th Street being closed, they'll freely be able to take construction equipment back and forth. So so if you think about it, they'll have a tremendous advantage having that extra space than the construction crew did that built the first National Tower 20 years ago because uh, there were buildings all the way around it. It was a much, much tighter spot. And then the idea is to develop that sometime. Mutual has the first right to develop that. Uh, other lot. That lot to the east and time will tell. We'll see how that all happens. And that's your news of the week brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. You can find them on uh, line at eaglemortgagecompany.com or you can stop in the office at 114th and Davenport. 
If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.